sex and relationships was like the wild card in my life. I always dated, but I didn't really want to commit. And I've never thought of myself as a monogamous person. And I thought, what is the deal with sex and relationships? And why? They seem so complicated and half of them end in divorce. And by the way, the sex I'm having is okay, not great. I'm also an overachiever. But everyone was like, my sex was amazing last night. I was like, what does that mean? So I was always asking people, when you say you had amazing sex, back up. Like, what did that mean? Like, we was his penis double jointed? Were you swinging from the rafters? Were you like, what? Were you having 16 orgasms? And I always wanted to know. So I thought, I'm going to do a show about sex in San Francisco. So I... I had an intern for my film and we started doing this show. And then she said to me, you should do, she was, you know what? Maybe you should try a podcast. I'm like, what the hell is a podcast? It was 2005. She was, well, it's only audio and you just need to record files and you don't need video. I'm like, thank God, because videos are harder. And I'm like, let's do that. So that's where the Sex with Emily started. And I invited a bunch of friends over to my house from di in different stages of relationships and dating and love and gender orientations and sexualities. And I interviewed them all day. So like, this is where the change happened. I sat there for like five hours. I hired a sound guy off Craigslist and I just sort of talked. And I realized that the di the conversation that was coming out was about people being really open and real and authentic about they didn't really understand their bodies and their sexuality. They were sort of on a journey and everyone was on a different path. But but the, the common theme, everyone was like, they didn't really know what good or great sex was. They didn't really know about relationships in the way that I needed to hear. And that I, I, we were all trying to figure it out. And I thought, there's really nowhere else to go for this information. And I sat there. It was almost like akin to what people say when they love at first sight or they fall in love or it's they knew the moment I saw it. I knew this was my path. In that moment and that day, I thought, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Because remember, I'd been on this path, like, pivoting when it didn't work. I was like, that was work. That didn't work. And I'm like, this is it. This is a dialogue and this is a conversation that's going to change people's lives because no one's talking about it. And I was so, like, I remember I want to be in, I was like, this, there's so much to learn, there's so much to unpack. And I just read every sex book on the planet and I started going deep into podcasting. And, and every week I released podcasts and I interviewed people and that's where that all started. You invited these, these friends of yours to come to your apartment. You had a camcorder. Yep. You're going to put them on camera. This is before funny. Instagram. It was, it was this. I still have it. It was this audio. Oh, no. This was my traveling audio player. It was a, it was a soundboard. Right. But they were going to talk about their sex lives and their ideas about sex on record for yeah. you to then do whatever you want to do with that. Yeah. And they were fine with They were fine with that. Fine with it. Because remember, and what I find out is that people are like, how are you going to get anyone to talk about sex? Everybody wants to talk about sex. Yeah, so we not necessarily on, on 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 a podcast, but everybody has questions. Everybody is lost. Nobody had marching. No one understood it. It was like, and how do you stay with someone for a year? How do you stay with someone long term and have great sex? How do you know what you want? No one was talking about women's masturbation or women's orgasm at all. And so, people were open. They were like, "Yeah, I will tell you my opinions and my beliefs." Now, not everybody got into like the nitty gritty details, but people were like, "Here's my beliefs on it," or "Here's why I got divorced," or "Here's what I like in the bedroom." But it wasn't as specific as it's gotten over the years. But people were open, and I actually did film the first twenty, and I have that ta those tapes, but they, I never used them because I couldn't get didn't have people. I couldn't afford. Like, I didn't know what to do with video at the time. Right. So no. people were open. How did you come across Captain Erotica? Oh, my God. I met Captain Erotica because I was really into Burning Man. Um, I wasn't into Burning Man yet. Burning Man is a festival in, in the desert that everyone goes to and dresses. And Do you know the Burning Man Festival? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so my friend Mark would go to Burning Man, and that was before I went. And he's like, you have to meet Captain Erotica because he's told us. Remember, once you get into this realm of sex and relationships today, Everybody comes out of the war work. And also remember it's San Francisco where people are very open and people like mm -hmm. poison someone naked or walking down the street, someone flogging someone. Like you're just like, okay, yeah, they're they're trans or whatever. Like, welcome to San Francisco. People are doing their thing. So he said to me, Captain Erotica was at my Burning Man camp last year. And he is somebody who works with people in open relationships and he helps men who are um, 
with their wives. Like he teaches them how to be better lovers to their wives and he teaches them how to uh, whatever. He's open. He's like Spanx and th- I don't know. I was like, okay. So I met him because people thought he'd be a great interview. So he was one of my first interviews because he was the person I knew that was in the sex space doing being. I thought that was so shocking. Like at the time, it was like, it took me pretty quick to catch up that like open relationships and people don't have to live in a monogamous life and that's okay too. And that it actually does work and it's not just people who are horny or people who are sex addicts. Some people are, but some people just like know that monogamy isn't for them and they know how to practice excellent communication and rigorous honesty and so all that. So he was my first person. I was like, wow, people do this and men let you have sex with their wives in front of them and to show them how to have sex with them in a way that's completely ethical. Now, who knows? Like maybe he went off the grid and something crazy happened. But at the time, it was like really groundbreaking for me. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.